I love trying new keyboards and when I saw this keyboard coming out, I just had to pre-order it straight away. And now that I've spent a little bit of time with it, I have a few thoughts on it that I wanna share with you. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, I uncover Apple tech and Apple related tech. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more as well as that notification so you get updated. The MX Keys Mini comes in two versions, a normal version and a Mac version. The Mac version basically doesn't show the split views like you see here for the Windows keys as, and the normal version doesn't have the do not disturb which is compatible with Mac on the delete key. Also the F and FN and control keys are also the other way around on the Apple version like it is on the Apple keyboards but everything else is identical so if you plan on using this keyboard with a Windows computer now or at some point into the future then definitely get the normal version like the one I have here. The design is very modern and simple. It's pretty heavy for a small keyboard weighing in at 506 grams. I think it's actually mainly due to this sort of heavy stand section as I think it stores the large battery. The whole keyboard is held together by this metal plate and it looks and feels nice. There is a little bit of flex as you can probably see but this is pretty much the norm with these thin and light keyboards but it doesn't really affect the typing feel. The MX Keys Mini comes in a silver color which I have here which I really like but also comes in graphite and rose but this is only available in the normal version not on the Mac version. The rest of the construction is plastic like the stand itself as well as the bottom of the keyboard. Now this does have five rubber feet which does a really good job at keeping it in place on a desk. The keycaps and switches are really nice. I like the shape of the keycaps and I got used to them pretty much instantly. They have this square design with this circular indentation within the center of the keycaps, which does help with typing and knowing where the keys are. It does have this matte coating, which feels like it's gonna be long wearing, but obviously I can't say for certain as I've only had it for a short while. If it's anything like the full size MX keys, then you should be in safe hands. The backlight is probably the main reason you're gonna be looking at this keyboard, as we know that the Apple Magic keyboard isn't backlit and I mean who doesn't want some kind of backlighting on their keyboard. It's adjustable too, but it also has this cool feature whereby when you place your hands near the keys of the keyboard, the backlight automatically turns on. And then when your hands are away from the keys for more than around sort of three or four seconds, the backlight dims, which helps to save on battery life, which I'll get into later. Here's a quick type test. Overall, the switches feel really nice and feels very familiar to the MacBook keyboard, but it is a little bit heavier than the MacBook ones like the Magic Keyboard as well as the ones obviously on the MacBook. It also has a slightly longer travel, which can feel nice for some and I do prefer it, but some do prefer the shorter travel from the Magic Keyboard. Now, the reason I keep saying Apple Magic Keyboard and the MacBook Keyboard is because I know a lot of my audience will be looking at this keyboard to get a similar feel to that or to potentially upgrade from the Apple Magic keyboards from yesteryear. Now, I'm not gonna get into the marketing BS that Logitech says about these switches, but basically they are a scissor type switch with a low profile brown feel to them. Um, they're not obviously mechanical, but they have that sort of feeling. I personally didn't like the weight of the switches as they did feel a little bit fatiguing uh, typing for more than an hour or two. For heavier typers, it might not be too much of an issue. Who, for those who do like that heavier switch, I mean, these aren't heavy by any means, but definitely heavier than the MacBook keyboard and the Magic keyboard. On the top row of keys, you have a few useful functions for both Windows and Mac, but unfortunately not for Linux. This gives you quick access to dictation, emojis, screenshots, and media functions. Now, you need to make sure that you download the Logitech Option software to make use of these functions properly. Unfortunately, this is only available for Mac and Windows, no Linux support. Linux only gives you the standard functions and media keys like volume and mute. The software of the Logitech Option software is really nice and it has a key feature. You can actually change from the F4 to the delete keys to almost anything that you like. And it also is 
application specific, meaning that you have shortcuts for editing programs and then you can have a set of different functions and shortcuts for web browsing or photo editing. And it's really, really nice. Connecting to your devices is really easy and you can connect up to three devices via Bluetooth or via their Bolt dongle, which actually isn't included and isn't actually even out at the time of writing this. This will work with iPads, Macs, Windows, Androids, and iPhones. Basically, if it has Bluetooth, you're gonna be absolutely fine with it. I will say though, if you have the older Logitech wireless receiver, it won't work with that. So you will have to buy the new Bolt wireless receiver. This will cost you an extra 11 pounds, but I would recommend you get this because you do get a slightly better connection when using it with M1 Max and it does seem that M1 Max do have a Bluetooth issue with the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros that's long to say I haven't found a Bluetooth issue with this whereas with the uh, M1 Max uh, again not an issue but depending on how you've got your M1 Max set up on your desk, you may have connectivity issues. Also, if you have File Vault enabled on your Mac, this is due to an encryption, it actually might prevent the keyboard from uh, connecting to your computer if you haven't logged in quite yet. You can charge it up via the USB-C port and they include a USB-C to USB type A cable, which does suck a little bit that they didn't give you some kind of adapter for USB-C devices, especially for the cost of this thing, which I'll get into in a minute. Now with the Mac version, you do get a USB type C to USB type C cable, just not with the normal version. The battery life on this thing is pretty good with around 10 days with the backlight on or five months with it off. I of course haven't tried the backlight off battery test, but the 10 days uh, battery life does seem pretty accurate to me. Now let's get on to price because this kind of stung me a little bit. I basically paid just under a hundred pounds for it. And I think that this is just a little bit too much for this keyboard, not because it's not a good keyboard. In fact, I think it's a great keyboard for almost anyone. And I think that you'll get on well with it. It's just a little bit odd that it's the same price as the bigger, uh, older brother of it. If this was 10 or 20 bucks cheaper, then it, this keyboard would make sense. I would actually choose this keyboard over the Apple Magic Keyboard, which does cost 149 pounds, but that one does have the Touch ID button, which only works with the M1 Max and M1 Pro Max, uh, and M1 Max Max. Oh dear, Apple, come on, change that. <laughs> if you are looking at those Apple Magic Keyboard options, then I would obviously recommend getting the Mac version of the MX Keys Mini, if that's what obviously you're comparing it against because the function buttons and stuff like that are just gonna work better with Apple and Mac devices in general. But if you are looking at the normal Magic Keyboard, which retails for a hundred bucks, then I would still actually choose this over the Magic Keyboard because this allows you to connect up way more devices more easily. Plus you have the option of using a wireless dongle for a stronger connection, which can be invaluable to some of you depending on obviously your setup situation. I also think that the two year warranty is great on this as well. I think for anyone else, I would say wait another six months because they're gonna drop the price on this and then it's gonna be an absolute still. I do love the Logitech software for the customization features of that function row keys and could be actually uh, a no brainer for anyone that does love customization because honestly that function with this keyboard was invaluable to me. Don't get me wrong, I do love my mechanical keyboards and obviously this cannot compare, but this is a really, really nice keyboard that you can easily travel with, that you can use on your desk, and you can even use it on your lap. It's honestly such a nice keyboard to use. For me, it's not quite enough to replace a mechanical keyboard, but obviously this isn't meant to. This is a nice, easy keyboard that can connect up with pretty much anything, has the right functions, and has that software capability. If you wanna pick one up, I will leave an affiliated link down in the description below, which does help me out at no extra cost to you. But that's it from me today. Make sure that you give this video a like, and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can watch more videos coming from me. But if you wanna watch more videos from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two videos right over here. Go ahead, click on it. You're gonna absolutely love it. Go on, I'll wait. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.